Welcome friends! In today's video we're talking about all my spring corn. So the ranunculus and the anemones I'm going to pre-soak today with you and plant out in a couple weeks from now which will be part two to this video. So today we're looking at what varieties I'm growing. Spoiler, I bought way too many. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what I did here or where I'm going to plant them, but um, I have a few friends where I hopefully can drop them in their garden otherwise. And I'm really excited to start the pre-sprouting process today. And I'll take you along for this. So this will be part one of the video of getting them started and getting them pre-sprouting. And then we'll probably do a part two in like two to three weeks, depending on how they go, how to plant them out. And when we talk about this, I am starting this mid-February. The video is coming live just a couple weeks later probably, so keep that in mind. You can do that when you see the video straight away. And I am planning to plant them out in the garden under a cover for now in mid-March ideally. The problem with the spring blooms is that they like cooler temperatures and here in my zone 6 in Attleboro we have like two weeks of spring <laughs> weather-wise, so it's pretty cool. And then it flips after um, two nice weeks in like May or so, pretty much to hot temperatures in June usually. And that was where they got hit over the head last year with some 90 and I think like even 100 degree days. Uh, I'm surprised that they still bloom, but this year I'm trying to give them a chance to bloom earlier and we'll see how that goes. So follow me along and subscribe to the channel if you want to see how this timing will work out here for zone 6 and let's get started. So let's talk a little bit about ranunculus and anemones first. So this is what the ranunculus look like. They look like teeny tiny octopus and pretty much like they are dead. They aren't dead, they are just dormant. So we're waking them up with pre-sprouting and soaking them first before we pre-sprout them. So we'll see the soaking process um, in a second. And yeah, and they usually plump up like double the size. You will see this in this video as well. So that's what the ranunculus are. And then they get actually planted with the tentacles facing down. So that's where the roots will come out. And then the other thing which I'll have are the anemones. They look different. They look, I don't know, like shriveled nuts. And same thing, they get uh, pre-soaked and then pre-sprouted in a tray um, and give them a head start before they get planted out. And for those, you put the pointy side up. Um, usually you see that at the flat bottom you will see very quickly roots emerging and this is how you plant these ones. Both of them are really really beautiful and let's talk a little bit about the varieties I have. So again I bought way too many. I'm really not sure what I was thinking. Let's start with the ranunculus first. So here I have two boxes of the Chamello. Those are the beautiful puffy light pink Ranunculus, which are very very popular so I'm super glad I got my hands on those and I actually have I think two packages of them yes yeah, so those are really really pretty ones oh no I have three ones how did that happen <laughs> oh yeah my friends definitely will get some and in each package I have like 20 I think for space I have like space for <laughs> about a hundred or if I squeeze them in for a few more, I have also a lot of spring containers where I'm planning to pluck um, those ones in. So we'll see with how much or with how many leftovers I actually end up, but you'll see I have a lot. <laughs> All right, so that was the stack for the Shamello. Then um, in the same color um, scheme, I have the wedding pastel. So that's the mix with all beautiful like wedding pastel colors. If you follow me for a while and have seen my other um, my other flowers I'm planning to grow from seed, for example, this video, I have a tendency for the pink, blush, purple colors that just, uh, gosh, love them all. Then, then I have here a beautiful um, Picotti mix, the Ticolotti, um, probably butchering that here, <laughs> but those were really, really beautiful last year with the really cute 
color on the edges of the blooms. I love them. So I have two of those as well. And the Amadine Salmon, again, this was just a beautiful one, which I liked from the color last year as well. That was one of the few who also still bloomed despite my <laughs> late planting. So those got in another run as well. And then I splurged on some special ones and don't look up how much they are because they are too expensive. <laughs> but um, I got some butterfly ranunculus, which are gorgeous. I think I got some cut, uh, cut flower um, ranunculus of those butterfly variety from one of the local flower farms we have here around the Five Forks farm. And oh my gosh, that was so pretty. And they had also a beautiful long face life. What is different with those butterfly ranunculus compared to the classic uh, full ranunculus, you'll see it in the picture here, but they have a little bit more like open bloom growth habit, which looks like it's almost falling apart, but it's actually, that's how the bloom looks and how the bloom stays in the vase for a while and it's just gorgeous so but they are for some reason very thought after and for that um with the demand and supply challenges <laughs> the prices are um definitely not for the faint of heart so i have here the butterfly haze really beautiful then the other one here which i probably butcher as well the Putalus <laughs> butterfly and the last one like that I don't tend to like yellow but I'm okay with yellow in spring because I have also a lot of daffodils out see outside here so I'm really excited to like mix those ones together ideally and then um, the last one here the butterfly ariade or however you want to pronounce that, that is the like this light pink with those dark um, centers and like, oh, swoon. So we'll, we'll see this. I'm really excited to grow these. And from the method of how you treat them, it's exactly the same like any other ranunculus. So you soak them, pre-sprout them, and then plant them. But as expensive they were, they will have my full attention <laughs> throughout the process. So then let's switch to the anemones. So I have here some uh, blue anemones. This is just such a special color with them. It's I'm not a, usually a huge fan of blue because I feel always it has a hard time to mix with other colors. Although with the like charmella or the wedding pastels, I feel that um, gives an interesting pop of color in spring bouquets. So I have um, a bunch of those and then another I'm a sucker for white blooms, so I have some white anemones here with the dark um, or with a the, with the black center because I find them so, so pretty. And a few more pastel anemones, that's a mix. Let's see how those go. And then some pastel violets. Again, those ones I hope will bridge nicely between those blue ones and those other pastel colored spring blooms. We've got some Bordeaux just because <laughs> I think I'm not exactly sure how they will mix with the other ones but the color was just a stunner and then some more white ones yeah so we'll have definitely enough every package I showed you except for the butterfly ranunculus was like 20 pieces <laughs> so I mean, yeah it's like a lot <laughs> like over two 200 are more like 250 um, plants so <laughs> we'll see where we plant them but I'm excited to get them started so how do we start them again they are very very dormant and to wake them up they like to take a bath for that I have here in um, yeah, just a green plastic um, container when you research how to how to soak them. There are many different options, but most sources say that you want to give them some water movement um, to decrease the risk of rotting later. And you also do not want to over soak them. So more is not better in this case. So you should not go over four hours of soaking. And I rather go on the safe side of things. I usually aim for three hours. If I get distracted, I have one hour of buffer, but um, this is usually what I do. 
and um, to create some air movement and air bubbles I have here in this is an aquarium um, aerator so I'll just put that oops, put that in when I filled the bucket here with water and put the corms in and let it bubble again there do your own research there are plenty of resources which just say go go and just like move it like every 30 minutes or so come and just like give it a little bit of movement that is actually what, what Laura from Garden Answer does she doesn't do any area um, aeration she has it just in like water um, soaking and then goes every once in a while swivels them around I will probably do that for a few because otherwise the soaking process will take too long and then when we are soaked we will put the corms in trays so those are normal 10 20 trays no holes we will put one layer of potting soil on the bottom slightly moist um, but not really really fully soaking wet last year i made the mistake i think the potting soil was too wet so i had a i had a few ones rotting away so i'm a little bit more conservative on the water this year and we also had <laughs> We also apparently had a mouse in our basement last year and for some reason they love anemones corms it's a delicacy for them um, so I ended up with one corm out of the 20 corms or 40 corms I was planning to grow last year as my first attempt and yeah all of the other ones were eaten by the mice <laughs> and but that one which survived was so pretty that I went big and heavy <laughs> this year so and this year we have traps so there should not be any risk of that so we will see about this but yeah we'll see all of that in detail but let's get some water and get those corn soaking here you can see the aquarium aerator it's really producing nice bubbles now we're just putting in the ranunculus corms. Those are the three packages of the Charmello. Now I'll set a timer for three hours on my phone to make sure that we're not forgetting about them. Yep, and then we're getting back. And don't forget to put a label in just in case, especially when you have so many varieties like I do. Great, so now it's three hours later and you can see how they all got a lot bigger and plumbed up. So we'll turn this one off. The other one I just went in every once in a while and mixed them around. They also got a lot bigger. I'm going to drain all of those vessels quickly and then we'll see each other here to put them in the pre-sprouting trays. Great, so three hours have passed, three hours in a little bit, so all of the time I took here for draining um, our corms, but those three hours you can see already how much they like plummet up or here the anemone corms they are easily double in size so what we do now is I pre-filled already a tray a 10 20 tray as mentioned earlier no holes it is moist to touch but not super wet um, and that is now where we put in the corm so I'll start here with the Charmellos, as we have most of them there. Tentacles, or tentacles, <laughs> like the little legs facing down. And then we just put them into the tray. I don't leave them much room necessarily left and right, because that's not the that's not the tray they're supposed to grow and they should just start rooting up a little and then they get transplanted outside. So you can um, cram them in. I like leave like I don't know an inch in between of them or so and just putting them face down and carry on like that. I'm curious to see how they look 
they don't look as great as the other corms. So we'll see how they do. And once I have them all here in the tray, I just put a light layer of soil on top of it. So they are basically um, completely under soil and you won't see them. And then I put them into the basement. They don't need light, they're under the soil, so no light necessary for two weeks in a cool corner. So they're cool flowers, they don't like it warm, so no heat mat required. I put them literally just in the bottom of my seed tray um, or my seed starting um, rack and let them sit there for two weeks. Every once in a while I move a little soil to see if they're doing um, something or if they are rotting. Um, when they start going you will see growth points on the top like little sprouts coming up and of course roots on the bottom. That is then the moment when you know you want to plant them outside where they belong. So yeah, so plan like two to three weeks pre-sprouting time for them and then they are ready to go for spring flowers. See that? How I put them in. I'll go quickly outside and sprinkle a little bit more um, soil on top of it and then we're good with that one. With the anemones it's the same thing except that the pointy side this time um, is up. You can cramp them in. Or not cramping but putting them tight and yeah we're just waiting for them to start rooting and then they get outside as well so no need to think like of spacing what you read on seed packers or whatsoever so same thing and they will get a layer of soil as well and go in the same place like the ranunculus so a dark cool place for them to sit for two weeks and develop roots and a little bit of an sprout on the top so that we can plant them outside. Yeah. One thing you want to test when you do those corms is also if you find some which are already like rather squishy, put them out and discard them. They should be swollen and more plump but still firm. Anything what's squishy that will most likely rot, I would take that out right away. Okay, those are the anemones. I hope you can see that. They get another layer outside as well, and then we're good to go. So I hope this video was interesting for you. It is a fun process to get those corms started because those are really, really pretty bloomers um, in spring and the first ones for me usually to bloom and also to cut for a bouquet, so I'm super excited. Let me know which varieties you have grown, which are your favorites. Um, let me know in a comment and yeah, I hope you stick around for a few more videos and subscribe to see how they're going to bloom.